You know what time it is. It is time for five on five. Here are my top five stories from the weekend that you may have missed and my top five to look out for this coming weekend. We begin right here in the Bronx with Fordham men's soccer. The Rams defeated George Washington 2-0 to win the 2020, 2021 Atlantic 10 men's soccer championship in Dayton, Ohio. For Fordham, it is the team's fourth conference championship and earns the Rams a fifth trip to the NCAA championship. The field and bracket for the 2020 NCAA Division I men's soccer championship is set and was announced Monday by the NCAA Division I men's soccer committee. And the A-10 champs Fordham will take on Conference USA champion Marshall on Sunday, May 2nd at 1 p.m. in the second round of the tournament in North Carolina. Congratulations to them. What an exciting story right here in the Bronx. 7-0-2 Fordham enters the NCAA championship as one of four unbeaten teams in the field, along with James Madison, New Hampshire, and Loyola Marymount. Meantime, the Major League Soccer season didn't start off on the right foot for NYCFC. The club lost 2-1 on the road against D.C. United Saturday. NYCFC will take on Cincinnati this Saturday, looking to rebound in the second matchup of the season. Our third look back from the weekend here on 5-on-5 Five Five turns our attention to the WNBA, where the league held its draft over the weekend. Michaela Onyenwere made history Thursday as the first from the Rocky Mountains selected in the first round of the WNBA draft. The New York Liberty selected Onyen Ware, a former Miss Colorado basketball at Grandview with the sixth overall pick. The versatile six-foot forward is coming off a dazzling career at UCLA where she became the program's first two-time AP All-American. Over Onyen Ware's final three years with the Bruins, she averaged 18.8 points while emerging as UCLA's most potent offensive threat. A late basketball bloomer, Onyen Ware didn't start playing until she was 12 and made large strides in the technical parts of her game while in college. Good draft pick by the Liberty. Here's more from draft night. It's going to be just a great opportunity to be able to play with people like Natasha Howard, um, Sammy Whitcomb, Sabrina Ionescu, and just have all those great players surrounding me. I think I'm going to learn a lot. Um, I think I'm going to go as a player, as a person as well. And I'm really excited to get out to Brooklyn. I hear New York has some great food, so I'm looking forward to that as, as well. In the fourth spot, a twist from last week. The Mets are starting to pull it together, while the Yankees are still looking for some better play, falling to their worst start since 1997. The Amazons were finally amazing for staff ace Jacob deGrom, who continues to perform well on the hill. His lifetime career ERA for the Mets now matches that of the late, great Tom Seaver. Here's Jacob deGrom. That was uh, truly business as usual. Um, you know, I think the... Well, I didn't know how many it was, but then I knew I had struck out quite a bit of guys in a row, but I was frustrated that I couldn't field my position. That ball was almost hit right at me, and, and, you know, McNeil did a good job of getting to it, just wasn't able to make the throws. With the Yankees sputtering over the weekend, we caught up with manager Aaron Boone on being swept by rival Tampa Bay. Got to get better, um, period. I think we all know that, and, uh, you know, obviously we have an off day here and, and another good team coming in. Uh, up against a couple of tough pitchers coming in, and you know we got to we got to get better as a group. Star Aaron Judge is frustrated. He says the Yankees simply have to be better. Yeah, every loss is frustrating. Um, you know, especially with the the talent we got in this room and the players we've you know acquired, the, the group that we have. It's it's something special, and uh, we're just not showing it right now on the field. And you know, we just gotta. Regroup, continue to learn from this, and and um, you know grind it out. And in the fifth spot here on five on five, an ode to motorsport with Max Verstappen winning in F1's second race of the season. Mark Marquez returning from injury after missing an entire season in MotoGP to take seventh on the grid, and a rookie shining in IndyCar. Alex Pillow earned his first NTT IndyCar Series win for Chip Ganassi Racing. Pillow joins Heady Company as only the third driver to win on debut for CGR, following Michael Andretti in 1994 and the late Dan Weldon in 2006. Here's more with the 24-year-old up-and-comer. It's just the start, it's just the beginning, but for sure we couldn't start um, better uh, with Chip Ganassi Racing. And it means a lot, to be honest. Like winning a race in IndyCar, it's not easy. Um, you can see in the past, it's, it, it's, people struggle and 
And yet, and last year I was struggling a lot to be up front. So um, IndyCar is so competitive that you don't know if next week, it's just next week, like the car is going to be the same, I'm going to be the same, but you don't know where we're going to be. Uh, we'll try to do our best, but for sure, at the moment, I'm going to embrace um, it. The, the feeling of being a winner. There's five stories that you may have missed and here's five on tap for the coming weekend. Where are my combat sports fans? UFC 261 features a big card this Saturday night. Three title fights, including a rematch between welterweight champion Kamaru Usman and Jorge Masvidal in the main event. This comes after Jake Paul shocks the world by beating former UFC fighter Ben Askren in a boxing match. Askren apologizes for the loss. Paul, you know, keeps talking that talk and walking his walk. Plenty of notables are now lining up to fight the social media star. I'll stick to the real thing, though. UFC 261 should be a goodie. I'll also have my eye on the return of star rookie guard LaMelo Ball. That may not happen this weekend, but it is likely to happen in the next week. He has been cleared to resume individual basketball activity after a scan on his fractured right wrist showed that it has healed. While the Charlotte Hornets did not say when Ball will be able to return to game action, a source told ESPN that there's optimism he could be ready to return to the lineup in a week. Ball suffered the injury on a fall in a March 20th loss to the LA Clippers, the third overall pick in the 2020 NBA Draft. Ball has averaged 15.9 points, 6.1 assists, and 5.9 rebounds this season. He is among the candidates for Rookie of the Year. In other NBA news, the Brooklyn Nets and New York Knicks are both on their way to a postseason berth. The Knicks have been streaking of late, and the Nets, despite injuries, remain a serious contender in the Eastern Conference. Imagine both New York teams being in the top four in the East come the playoffs. Brooklyn faces Boston and Phoenix this weekend, while the Knicks host Toronto Saturday at MSG. Although the NFL Draft is next week, Thursday on April 29th, I'll be keeping a close eye on the league this weekend and the first few days of next week leading into Thursday night. The NFL Draft grabs my fourth spot here on 5 on 5. So curious about where the signal callers land in this year's draft, from Trevor Lawrence to Justin Fields to Zach Wilson and, of course, everyone in between. Speaking of, we'll say goodbye to one in the C-list while wrapping up 5-on-5 five five with an eye on a QB that remains in very hot water. And what amounts to the most substantial league response to date from Deshaun Watson regarding 22 civil lawsuits filed against him, the NFL quarterback's attorney says that all 22 women accusing Watson of sexual misconduct are lying. The counter-accusation comes on the heels of Watson's 22 accusers all complying with judicial orders last week to reveal their identities. That's 5-on-5. Five five. We hit the C-list for one of the feel-good stories of 2020. Happy trails to Alex Smith. The QB is calling it a career. The first overall pick in the 2005 NFL Draft, Smith played from 2005 to 2012 in San Francisco, from 2013 to 2017 in Kansas City, and in 2018 to 2020 in Washington. Smith, the veteran quarterback who shocked the football world by returning to the field last year after a devastating leg injury, announced in an Instagram video that he is retiring. The 36-year-old Smith made clear that he is happy that he is now able to leave the game his own way and not on a stretcher as it appeared he was going to when he suffered that devastating leg injury in 2018. And he's extremely quotable in his goodbye to the fans. Open quote. Two years ago, I was stuck in a wheelchair, staring down at my mangled leg, wondering if I would ever be able to go on a walk again or play with my kids in the yard. On a routine play, I almost lost everything, but football wouldn't let me give up. Because no, this isn't just a game. It's not just what happens between those white lines on a Sunday afternoon. It's about the challenges and the commitment they require. It's about how hard and how far you can push yourself. It's about the bond between those 53 guys in the locker room and everybody else in the organization. It's about fully committing yourself to something bigger, close quote. Thank you for that life lesson, Mr. Smith. Well said, you will be missed. Thank you for being a bright spot in a down year. I think all of us could agree and appreciate the idea of overcoming challenges in 2020 and how we can strive for better days in 2021. That's your look at sports. I'm Bobby C. Tune in next time for our sit-down with new Florida men's basketball coach, Kyle Neptune.